All right, all right, all right. Now we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to talk about all things professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside the ring, superstar news, rumors, updates, injury status, and et cetera, and, and uh, cross-promotional brand awareness, you know, basically anything in terms of wrestling, from the WWE to AEW, even the MLW stardom, uh, the NWA sometimes when if it's something that's big, you know, and if it's um, you know something that shakes the wrestling world or obviously gets a lot of attention on social media, that's uh, well, I guess the correct word for all you young people would be trending what's trending on social media. But us old guys were like, you know what? I kind of, you know, I could still talk about Shawn Michaels and how badass Triple H was back in the day. But, you know, you know we got to stick up with that. And I got to be honest, the way the wrestling promotions and the way uh, WWE and the direction it's going in, I like it. I feel like overall, this is something they needed a long time ago. But of course, you had a stubborn old man who, you know, kept getting into trouble and stuff like that. No, I'm just kidding. No. Allegations, allegations. But, you know, I, I feel like ever since Triple H really kind of took the helm, it's been great. I, I feel like, uh, you know, WWE, it's a new it's a new era. It's a new era. So if you're looking to become a wrestling fan, best thing you can do is start watching wrestling now. If you need help, you know, through it, you know, kind of help, you know, if you want to analyze, you need help analyzing it. Be like, who, who's who, what's what, what happens. Um, you know, you can always watch the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer podcast on the GSMC Sports Network. Thousand and ten percent. Check out the videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Thousand and ten percent dope. So let's go ahead and jump on into our fourth segment. What is next for the new uh original tribal chief making his way back to WWE? It was it was big. It was um oh my god. When he the something that was really cool that I feel like not a lot of pe- people kind of really captured when Roman Reigns came back. Is just the ability for him to go from a complete heel. He lost. He lost at WWE WrestleMania 40. People were, you know, they were saying bye. They were all excited because, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes, he accomplished his story. Took two years, two Warrior Rumble winners. But. Now you had him, you had Roman Reigns come back. And Roman Reigns, all he did was take some time off. He hint, he gave hints here and there on social media about him coming back. And WWE storytelling. Once when Roman Reigns lost at WrestleMania 40 and Jimmy Uso got injured, Jay was out of it. All you really had was Solo and Paul Heyman. That's all you had. I thought it was done. I thought it was dead. D-E-A, dead in the water. But no. The bloodline is back. Obviously, you saw him bring in, uh, you know, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. Then now you see Jacob Fatu. In the in the uh, weeks we have uh, you know Hiko Leo, as well, the younger brother of um, you know Tamatanga and Tangaloa, and it's just the uh, when Roman Reigns came back, well, kind of getting the history of Roman Reigns, he was forced down the WWE universe's throat. People hated Roman, hated him. I've been to so many wrestling um, events. I think I, I went to a no, a, a, a no mercy at um, at the Staples Center, and when Roman was, I think he was fighting. Um, I think he was fighting Braun Strowman. No, I think he was fighting John Cena. There was people that you know, all the John Cena haters. Everybody was like, "Cena sucks," and then uh, you know, all the Roman Reigns haters. It was at a point where people started chanting like, uh, like basically they were saying, "Oh, what did they say?" I think they said this match sucks or something like that. I think they were chanting something along those lines. But Roman Reigns, it took him to, you know, he won the Universal Championship. Then he, of course, he had to relinquish it because, uh, you know, his leukemia. Then he came back. SummerSlam of 2021, I think it was, where he speared the, the Fiend and had a complete different personality. 
something that he probably should have gotten a long time ago. And then you just see him rise to superstardom. WWE tried so hard to make Roman Reigns the babyface. And now he finally is. He finally is. And it's during an era of uh, professional wrestling with the Paul Levesque era that I feel like it's absolutely perfect. Because before, during the Vince McMahon era, you had the baby faces appeal to the crowd just so damn much. It's kind of pander for their attention. That, you know, that's not what this, I don't think that's how you're supposed to do it. And especially, you know, with Roman Reigns after his return at SummerSlam, I hope he does not go into that direction. I feel like this has to be really held like very, very delicately because you don't want to see Roman Reigns kind of jump back into that, like, you know, oh, he's trying to be a baby face, but you know, you know, who really cares? But everything that's going on with the bloodline with Solo Sokoa, I just think it's so perfect. It's so damn perfect. And I I, I love it. I think, uh, you know, and also what shocked me is uh, Roman Reigns, he, you know, he wasted absolutely no time at targeting the bloodline. There was a lot of speculation saying that he would, he would eventually, he would eventually, you know, he would join Solo Sokoa's group. Obviously, they're family. That's why when he went inside the ring, I kind of thought on the mind of everybody's, you know, all on their, all the fans in attendance of SummerSlam, everybody watching at home, you know, there was a slight doubt in your mind that you're like, all right, what if he goes after Cody? What if, like, he supports his family? What if he tells Solo, like, you know what, like, okay, I'm back now. You don't have to be the tribal chief anymore. But, of course, the promos on WWE SmackDown where Solo Sokoa was asking Roman Reigns to challenge him. That's kind of something that was kind of put to bed probably about a month ago or two, three weeks ago when Solo Sokoa was getting real aggressive on calling out the old tribal chief, saying that he wasn't man enough to hold the WWE championship. He wasn't good enough to support the family. He wasn't great enough to defeat Cody Rhodes. Heavy words. Not smart, to be honest. So, looking further down the line. Looking further down the line. Obviously, WWE SmackDown this week is going to be huge. I think the viewership is going to be... It's going to absolute skyrocket. It's going to be interesting to find out what Cody Rhodes has to say. It's going to be so awesome to see what Roman Reigns has to say. I can't wait to see what Solo Sokoa has to say after getting laid out. The the quote-unquote tribal chief. The strongest guy in the world. Like, dude, you're pulled a chunk. And that's something that I also wasn't, you know, also that would have been, we don't see Solo Sokoa as a a main card guy. Honestly, I know I don't. That's why I felt like they kind of rushed this storyline a little bit, but it it was perfect. I feel like it, you know, it ended and it, you know, the way it's going right now, I feel like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to ensure a lot of, you know, seats in the butts. People are going to be. Highly invested into it. They're going to watch WWE SmackDown religiously. Definitely. But this was the problem of Solo Sokoa just having zero credibility as soon as, uh, you know, he took this the tribal chief, you know, role or whatever, ever since Roman Reigns got defeated at, at uh, WrestleMania 40. And that's something that I was like, all right, I feel like, you know, I don't think Solo Sokoa has enough prestige, but he has his guys. Right now, Roman is all alone. You have Jay on Monday Night Raw, Jimmy injured, but he's cleared, medically cleared. A lot of people said that he's going to get the band back together. But then again, I'm not too sure how well that's going to go as well. I do think there's going to be a Survivor Series match. I feel like we're going to see the original Bloodline with the honorary Us. And maybe somebody like, um, like Zila. As well, maybe he helps out Roman Reigns. And then the, you're going to have the new young bloodline. If The Rock comes saying that he's been pulling the strings the whole time, he supports Solo's claim. We're going to see The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I feel eventually. I know The Rock kind of stated, kind of stated his claim he wanted to fight him at WrestleMania. 
But the Royal Rumble, perhaps, maybe. I feel like it would make more of a, you know, more of a statement if The Rock did fight uh, Cody Rhodes. And Cody Rhodes, you know, obviously, you know, I don't know if The Rock would ever win unless he was coming back to wrestling full time. That would be a bombshell. That would be crazy in and itself. But a lot of possibilities, a lot of possibilities with this storyline. Like I said, you know, WWE has to be a little delicate about it because right now the fans are absolutely in love with the Tribal Chief. And I, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's, um, you know, obviously Roman wants his belt back. Obviously, you know, that's something that's never going to change. He wants to be the tippy dog, dog, top dog. And he wants to be the champion. So, you know, can't wait to find out what happens, um, you know, with this storyline. I'm, I, I, like I said, I did feel like it was pushed a little bit. And we're probably going to see a tribal combat match against uh, Solo Sokoa. And Roman Reigns, which Solo Sokoa is going to win. But I don't know. It's going to be great. I feel like I can't wait for Survivor Series. I can't wait for the War Games match. It's going to be, oh, it's so crazy how we're already talking about War Games. And it's only uh, beginning of August. (laughs) All right, guys. So we have our fifth and final segment. Like I said, it's kind of strange how, like, you know, I was doing a little bit of research today and uh, didn't really find anything that eye popping about what happened today in wrestling history. But I'm rapidly running out of time. I got my man, uh, Emron, with his GSMC soccer podcast. So going to see if I can, you know, wrap this up a little, you know, kind of put it in power power mode. And, uh, yeah, but, you know, overall, let's enjoy ourselves. So, hey, uh, stay tuned. <laughs> 